Hello, everyone, and welcome to the sharing group, y'all. Today's lesson of A Course in Miracles is lesson 93, and I love this lesson. I was just telling our guests um, my experience of it. It's lesson 93, light and joy and peace abide in me. Light and joy and peace abide in me. And this is evident, y'all, in my next guest, that light and joy and peace abide in him. Author, teacher, energetic healer, and transformational life coach, David Bennett, had a near-death experience during a violent storm and feels the light, joy, and peace that abides within him. So David, as I spoke earlier, when I read this lesson last night, preparing for you to come on the show, uh, I could feel the vibration of these beautiful words. And that's what I love about the course. Like, where else do we are we validated in these ways, right? Other than the force and mirror. I mean, in other ways as well. Buddhism, you know, there's so many, so many mountains, so many roads to the mountain. But I could feel it in the cells of my body um, that listen. And I knew that it was very closely related to you. Uh, welcome to the show. Loretta, thanks so much for having me. This is Quite an honor. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, yes, you may start wherever you feel is appropriate with your experience. There is much to share. So uh, yeah. you can go ahead and start. <laughs> yeah, the um, that's a beautiful lesson, you know, in the Course of Miracles, um, because we do have so much within us. We have so much within us and and. You know, we get caught up in the circumstances of our day to day and and we we tend to forget sometimes that, you know, when we abide by the love and the joy and the peace that resides within us, our interactions are so much better, just so much more, you know, empowered. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's that type of message is is critical for us to hear, for all mm -hmm. of us to hear, Absolutely. you know. When I had my near-death experience, it was it was many, many, many years ago, but it stays with me today just as much as it did then. Mm -hmm. um, I was in an accident at sea where I was, we were, you know, it was very rough seas, 25 to 30 foot seas, and our boat had capsized and I was catapulted into the ocean and being tumbled and tossed like a rag doll. And eventually I drowned, but I found myself at first, in this absolute darkness. Now, I know a lot of people that that would be frightening, but mm -hmm. for me, it was very peaceful because I just died this violent death mm -hmm. of drowning in in violent seas. You know, being tumbled and tossed and and not knowing where I was or anything like that. So to find myself in this peaceful, calm, absolute darkness, without the roaring sea, without the chill of the ocean. To be comfortable and peaceful, um, I was curious. I was more curious. I wasn't frightened as much as I was curious. Where am I? What what's going on? You know, and that's when I saw a light. I saw a light, and it appeared as though I was moving toward it, or it was moving toward me. I still to this day don't know which was which, but there was movement toward this light. And as I got closer to the light. The light appeared to be millions upon millions of fragments of light. And they were beautiful because they were all different colors. They were interacting with each other like as if they were one mind. When You, you know when you see uh, a flock of migrating birds and they all kind of move in unison, you know? Well, that's kind of like the light. It, it, was, it was in movement and all these fragments were just so connected to each other. As I got closer... I started feeling these waves of love, just mm -hmm. absolute waves of love. It felt like I was being wrapped in a warm blanket of love, you know, mm -hmm. and 
and three of the fragments kind of broke away from the mass and 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 started greeting me mm -hmm. and they were welcoming me home wow. and this love of being welcomed home was just so incredible that I was <laughs> I like to say I was in gaga awe mm -hmm. of what was what what this was you know and eventually a dozen of the light beings came they greeted me they welcomed me and they were supporting me at the same time and they they kind of communicated to me it was just a, almost like a knowing an understanding and we went into the light into this area that felt very spherical to me like a giant bubble we went inside and then i started to relive my life and I was reliving my life, but not just from my perspective, mm -hmm. but from everyone that I'd ever interacted with, mm -hmm. from their perspective as well. It was like my consciousness had just fragmented into these multiple streams of consciousness all at once. And I could experience my interactions with everyone, you know, from their perspectives. Mm -hmm. Well, my soul family, these light beings that greeted me, I considered them family because I recognized them as family. I recognized them as, as beings that I've spent lifetimes with. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. they were experiencing it the same way I was. And to tell you the truth, because I was a brash young man. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, uh, I did a lot of things to get where I wanted to be. And I didn't really, uh, you know, I wasn't, I was very self-involved. Mm -hmm. And so my, my soul family had to see that. And I was, I was, I honestly have to say, I was ashamed that they, you know, they had to experience that, mm -hmm. but they, they didn't, they loved me. They supported me. In fact, if anything, they seemed a bit excited to be able to experience my life this way. Mm -hmm. And we went through many, many of my life experiences. And, you know, Loretta, some of the things that I thought were important really didn't have very much significance. I had become the chief engineer of a research vessel in my mid-20s, and I was really very proud of it. I could I honestly say I was very filled with ego about being, you know, mm -hmm. accomplishing that. In the life review, it didn't really, didn't really matter that much. That didn't matter that much. But what did matter and what really uh, kind of comes to the message that you, you know, started this uh, conversation off with was when we did something with loving intention, when we would do something with loving intention and be passionate about it, then that would create some of the biggest ripples of, you know, from the interactions that we were having with people. So it was awe inspiring, incredibly humbling. I mean, I was, <laughs> And and my soul family was just loving me and supporting me. But I eventually got to a point where, in the life review, where I didn't have a reference for what I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was, it, and I didn't know at the time, but I was actually looking at uh, my potential future if I were to return. Mm -hmm. And it, it was kind of interesting because everything in the life review that I had lived was absolutely crystal clear. Mm -hmm. But when we passed that threshold of life and death, um, then it became kind of like I was looking down this corridor and in the center of the corridor, it was very clear. But off to the periphery on either side, it was, it was like a little out of focus mm -hmm. and I came to understand that, you know, that rep kind of represents our free will. We have a path that we've agreed to in life, but we can go a little bit to the right if we want to, but we'll be kind of nudged back to the center and we can go to the left a little bit if we want to, and we can come back to the center. And one of the things that I enjoy in life is I enjoy, I enjoy taking the curves. I enjoy, you know, I, I really do like to squeeze the juice out of life. And so I tend to push the envelope, you know, that, that's, that's who I am. I was a commercial diver. I was an adrenaline junkie, you know, and, a, and that's, that's who, that's a big part of the life that I've been living. And so we went down these 
future events until I got to a certain point. And then the light, the these millions upon millions of fragments of light, it was all in unison, spoke, and it said, this is not your time. And it was this resonant, just <laughs> very loving parental kind of voice, you know, that just said, this is not your time. You must return. And I said, no way. <laughs> I am not going back because I found a family that, yeah. that loves me. I'm feeling love like I've never felt before. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, you know, supported. Um, and I knew that body was just in the ocean. It was cold. It was, and it was dead. And I just had no desire to go back to that body. Mm -hmm. The light spoke one more time and it said, you must return. You have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that word purpose just, I mean, it really just resonated with me. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the, the neat thing about when we're on the other side is, is we have this expansive awareness, this expansive um, consciousness um, where it's like we're connected to all the souls that ever were, to all the souls that ever will be. Mm -hmm. And that expanded awareness, when I examined the purpose, mm -hmm. it was so simple. It was so efficient, you know, uh, that I immediately, I, I could do nothing but come to acceptance. Mm -hmm. And so with acceptance, that's when I found myself back outside my body. It was still in the ocean. It was still being tumbled and tossed. But my my body had come close to the wreckage and the bow line um, had wrapped itself around my arm. Mm. And when it, and, and another set of waves came and hit the wreckage and there must've been a little bit of air left in that pontoon. It was a rubber Zodiac. And so it, you know, it was a inflatable type of uh, landing craft that we were in and, um, and it popped it up to the surface. And when it did, it, it, you know, pulled my arm right up, actually dislocated my shoulder and my thumb and pulled my body up to the surface. And I was just outside watching this, you know, and, and I was, and three of the three original beings that greeted me were with me and, and we went up to the surface and I was just pondering, you know, because when we're outside of our body, we become this light being that is so much greater than what we are in this physical life. And I was looking at my body thinking, how is the enormity of me going to get in there? You know, how am I going to? Yeah. Yeah. And so a couple of waves pounded my body up against the wreckage. And when it did, it pushed some of that salt water up and out of my lungs and when when that happened my soul family gave me a gentle push and i kind of just vibrated back into my body and i like to say that you know dying is hard mm -hmm. coming back to life that's even tougher that's a lot harder mm -hmm. and um because you come back and you're like Wow, what was that? You know, what was that? Mm -hmm. What just happened to me? You know, and and um, I was an engineer, and and I saw things pretty much black and white. You know, I didn't, I really didn't, and I had been thrust into a world of color. Let me tell you, and so, you know, I didn't, I I was just totally lost. And the thing that I was trying to hang on to was that purpose, purpose purpose, purpose, but it was fading away. It was like sand in your hands. It was just slipping through my fingers and it was like purpose, purpose. What was that purpose? You know? And, and so I was, <laughs> I was pretty much fixated on that and trying to stay afloat. And, and my, the guys that were with me found me and we, we had to swim a mile, one more mile to get into shore, but but um, we all helped each other. We and we came together and we we made it into shore. But this event stays with you. Mm. You know, it's not like anything else. 
um, not like any other memory in my life, you know, mm. those memories are fleeting and they, you know, and you forget so much of your life, you know, but the experience itself doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't go away. Okay. Wow. 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 Thank you so much for sharing your <laughs> experience. Um, so much of what you said. I just would love to revisit. First of all, when you talked about that the light was all different kinds of lights, right? They all moved together, but it was really different individuals, right? Different lights that make up God. Is that, is that, and I think it's important for us to talk about this because now the buzz phrase is we are God. Well, it's hard for us, especially coming out of religion, David, to conceptualize how is that, right? And yeah. so, yeah, can you talk a little bit about how God was yeah. one body of many different beings? Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's it's a unity of all of the beings, all beings, you know, we're all together. We become this unity. We become this oneness. We hear that phrase oneness. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a coming together. It's a unity of, of, uh, you know, multiple consciousness into this greater totality of, of what I call God. You know, I, I perceive that as God. I, I, it was like, you know, I, I perceived that I was arguing with God that I wanted to stay, you know, and I wanted to stay. I didn't want to come back to this life. But yeah. but the when it spoke, it spoke with one voice, though. It spoke with one voice that was just this incredibly intelligent, resonant voice that that knew, you know, it knew more about myself and knew more about, um, you know, my life than even I did, you know. So it was able to show me all of this, you know, so this greater consciousness that we're a part of, mm -hmm. that is, you know, that is, I believe that when we're in this life, that we bring just a small portion of our light with us, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. but the greater totality of our light, our being, our essence, still resides in the oneness, and so that's our connection and that's our that's our threshold that's our doorway to be able to you know connect with the divine within ourselves is because we're always a part of god and god is a part of us so um but but yes god is made up of all of us and it's not just human beings it's everything mm -hmm. everything you know, that's why when we go for a walk in nature, we feel so alive mm -hmm. is because we're interconnected with with the nature itself, you know, with Mother Earth, with everything around us. So, yeah, yeah, it to me that that represents God. That's God to me. I love that. I love that because we are slowly integrating this information of, of who we are. And it's a, it's a great way to understand or understand, right? Mm -hmm. that, uh, that we are a part of this oneness. And that was beautifully explained, David. Uh, another thing that you talked about is it, okay, so let's go back to your life review, which I think is so significant, right? You, um, you know, you were a young man, you know, I've heard you talk about, you know, your childhood wasn't the easiest, right? So, no, no. Um, <laughs> so having this life review with your soul family, also viewing it, uh, you, you know, there were, you were ashamed of what you did, but it was no judgment, from the soul family. And it just makes me, I've heard that when we have these lifetimes in form, that when we go back to source, it's almost like uploading all these different experiences right back into source, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's like a way that 
God is able to experience all through our interactions. And I love that you talked about things that you did with loving intention had yeah. so many ripple effects. Talk about that. Um, yeah, the I, I totally agree with you. I I perceive it pretty much the same way that um, that you know God gets to experience what life is here on earth through us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that connection. You know, many people talk about, you know, the golden cord, you know, or, and that's just that, that connection of our light to, you know, the greater light of oneness mm -hmm. of source. And, um, and so, yeah, you know, when, when we die, it's, it's, um, it, there's a process in, in a lot of ways. There's a, because we have to reintegrate into our light body, into our light being. Yeah. And, and when we die, you know, um, when we're in this physical world where we feel shut off, mm -hmm. we feel like we're separate individuals and we suffer from this illusion of separateness. Um, but we can cross that threshold in life. But when we die, we totally cross the threshold. And so now, but we bring with us, like I, in the life review, I was ashamed that my soul family had to experience some of the more coarse things of my life, you know, mm -hmm. coarse episodes. And, um, but they didn't because they were in their pure essence. Okay. And they just loved me and they supported me because we were a soul family. And so, and they've been guiding me all along and they continue to guide me to this day. But the, but the, in the dying process, we have to, we have to learn to let go mm -hmm. of all of that, you know, of, of all of those, those things that we hold on to and to let go of the egoic mind and, and the, the, you know, the, the critical mind and things like that. We have to let go of that mm -hmm. so that we can become our pure essence of which is love, you know, because love is what really kind of holds us all together. It holds the universe together. Yeah. And so, you know, but in, in life, we, we don't work that way. You know, we don't, we allow ourselves to be so caught up in the circumstances that our awareness is at its lowest level. Yeah, It's when we can raise our awareness above the circumstances that we actually achieve clear vision mm -hmm. and we actually achieve you know, the ability to make empowered decisions that are, that are lo filled with loving intention, that sort of thing. So yeah, that there's a process in, in dying of, of letting go of our humanness, you know, the more dense elements of being human, because we no longer have to live in the circumstances. So we don't need to hang on to that, but there's, but, but because we're, you know, transitioning, we have to, you know, we have to let go. And so, you know, you hear about a lot of these near-death experiences and they're all different. It's because each and every one of us has to let go in our own way, yeah. you know? And so that's why there's so many different types of NDEs out there, you know, yeah. is, is uh, at least that's my belief that, that, you know, we have to let go and we have to transition back to our pure essence of who we really are. Mm -hmm. And it took you, thank you for that, David. It took you a while, I understand. Um, I've heard that for a while, you said you felt like you had one foot in this world and one foot still on the other side. And it took you a while to, to really accept, use the word acceptance is a huge part of your experience. To accept that you've had this, experience and integrate it. Talk about that because I know that you felt like you couldn't talk about it for a while. No, no. Yeah. When I first came back, I, I tried to share it with my, uh, with my first wife and that, that didn't go well. Um, cause it frightened her. And so I, uh, I felt like, well, I can't share it with my family and I didn't feel like I could share it with, um, with my mates because um, at the time I was a chief engineer of a research vessel. We did underwater exploration and we put each other's lives in each other's hands every day. Mm -hmm. And I was trained as a commercial diver. So death was kind of a taboo subject. You really just didn't talk about it. So I, 
I tried to stuff it away. Mm -hmm. But the things that I could I could deal with was acceptance. It became huge. You know, you you mentioned acceptance. That was was very large for me because um, you can't have that life review and see yourself in that totality. Uh, you know, without coming to acceptance that okay, this is who I am, mm -hmm. and also this is an experience that I had. You know, so uh, but accepting who you are, especially as somebody in their mid twenties, you know, that was, that was quite an accomplishment in itself. But, um, but I could accept that this is who I am. It didn't mean that I had to um, accept where I was because I knew that I could, you know, I knew I, I had issues, mm -hmm. you know, I was, mm -hmm. I was quick to temper. I was self-involved and I saw all that in the life review and I could accept that, okay, this is who I am, but I can work on myself. I can make myself to be a better person. I can start to live a better life, you know, but you know, when you come back, you don't immediately change. You have to kind of learn how to be the person that you want to be yeah. okay and so so yeah my people would still push the same buttons when i first came back you know but slowly over time i i have changed i've changed dramatically from the person that i used to be before you know before my experience and the other thing um that was tolerance was something that you know Prior to the experience, I was not a tolerant person. I, you know, I had my where I wanted to go, and that's and I was going to get there by gosh, any way by hook or by crook, I was going to get there. You know, mm -hmm. and so it did. And and like I said, I was very self involved, so it didn't really include other people. So there's no tolerance there in that kind of philosophy. So I, in the life review, I saw that so many people crossed my paths, and that they. Are, we talked to you know a minute ago about you know that illusion of being separate individuals. Well, we're all wandering around, you know, trying to forge a life, mm -hmm. and we're all making decisions, mm -hmm. and we're going to cross paths. And there are many times that I'm going to cross paths with someone who's making decisions that I don't agree with, mm -hmm. and that's okay. I could be tolerant because that's their life, that's their life choices, that's the way they're choosing to live their life. Yeah. I choose to live my life the way I want to. So I learned tolerance by by observing that, you know, by seeing that, you know, there's so many, like you said earlier, there's so many paths up the mountain, you know, to to enlightenment. And so we're all trying to find our higher sense. Mm -hmm. But many of us choose to go a different way, you know, and, and that's fine. You know, God bless. But the... um but I learned to be, you know, accepting of myself, the situation I find myself in, because I knew I could move forward, mm -hmm. always moving forward, and then also being tolerant. And and yeah. so that really empowered me a lot. And 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 finding out that um excuse me, not everything is um set in stone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. As an engineer, I saw things as black and white, like I said earlier, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, suddenly I realized that there's another level of truth, mm -hmm. a truth that resides within our hearts. And that truth, uh, for me, uh, was, you know, I would feel it resonating in my heart whenever there was a, a per I call them personal truths, that are, you know, they're, they're my truth. You know, something that really guides me. Yeah. Um, some people call them maybe ideals, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, that something that we strive for, that yeah. sort of thing. So those personal truths, um, they really enrich our lives. When we come across a truth that really makes our heart yeah. you know, sing, that, that, you know, that's really, really powerful stuff to, to try to follow. You know, they're, they're kind of like guideposts, you know, oh, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's follow this. You know, where's this taking us, you know? Yeah. And it, and it's all in the space of feeling, right? We yeah. feel it like when God said purpose, I think that spoke directly to your soul. Um, yeah. almost as if you could not separate yourself from that sense of purpose, which I think is so 
beautiful. Yeah, we all have we all have uh, something that we've agreed to yeah. try to achieve in life, you know, and um, and it becomes a it becomes a purpose that's kind of like hidden under the layer, but it's always there percolating up into our consciousness, you know, into where we want to go and how we make our decisions and that sort of thing. Um, I believe we have many, many types of purposes you know i i, I believe that um like uh and many and there some of them are shared like i believe humanity has a shared purpose of awakening you know <laughs> that's a that's a shared purpose for humanity you know um that. yeah but but then we also have um you know individual individual goals and, and purposes that um and we also have very um very momentary types of purposes, like the moment that you just read something and then all of a sudden someone comes along and they need to hear what you just learned. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of those little instant type of purpose, you know, that, that can, and when you recognize it, when you start to pay attention, when you raise that awareness to the point that you're aware of those synchronistic, you know, serendipity type of experiences, mm -hmm. then you, you, you know, you get to see that, wow, I'm really living in the flow yeah. because those, those synchronicities are happening all the time. Then, then yeah, I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. It's kind of like almost, you know, the universe is giving you an attaboy, a little pat on the back, you know, that, okay, you're yeah. right where you're supposed to yeah. be yeah. doing yeah. what you're supposed to do, you know? Yeah. That, that, that's beautiful. That, that makes me think about, you know, those of us that constantly see double digits, 11, 22, 30, it's almost like that's how I receive it. Like, okay, I'm I'm connected. I'm in the flow. Yeah. Yep. Um, please tell us, David, about your near death like experience. You had another spiritual experience, which I think is so uh, beautiful. Yeah. Well, I I've kind of had a few, but um, the the two that really stand out are um. 11 years after the original experience, mm -hmm. um, I was with a spiritual group that I uh, cared deeply for, and, and they were going to Arizona, to Sedona, actually, to uh, on a little spiritual retreat. And I grew up, part of my childhood, I grew up in, in the Verde Valley there, you know, with Sedona. Okay. And, uh, and so I was, I was, you know, oh, I, I was thrilled to kind of go, but I wasn't, uh, I, I thought I was going to go there and I was going to just, you know, hit some of the trails, um, that I used to go on in my youth and stuff like that. I was, I was expecting to spend a bit, a bit of time in the canyons and things like that. Right. But the fir very first day, we went and they wanted to do a meditation on Bell Rock. And that that's a nice spiritual, high energy, uh, you know, place. And, and so I went there and I went to do a meditation that I had learned way back when I was 14 and living there. I was, you know, the some of the grandmothers had taught me how to find my sacred space. And so I was going to do that. That was my form of meditation at that time. And so I started to go into my sacred space and all of a sudden that voice from the light mm -hmm. spoke to me and said, return to the light. And so I found myself back in the darkness, back in the void, traveling to the light, meeting my soul family. I totally relived my near death experience. Only this time in the life review, I had lived 11 years since the experience. Yeah. And and I really didn't think that I'd change that much because I had really tried to hide from my experience quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And but because of that acceptance, because of that tolerance, because of the truth that I was trying to follow, I saw how much it did change me. Those 11 years because I got to see those additional 11 years in the life review and <laughs> And it showed me so much about how I had changed, but it also showed me how much I hadn't come to terms with the original experience. And so from it told me, it kind of showed me that I needed to really adopt the experience 
everything about the experience, about arguing with God, about my soul family, who, by the way, had been giving me guidance during that 11-year period, but it was more like um, these understandings. I would I would suddenly have these knowings, you know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And when, when I would receive a knowing, I would test it because I didn't, you know, it's not something I learned. It's not something I experienced in life. And so I really wanted to... Uh, I wanted to find out, is this, you know, yeah, yeah, validate, is this vertical information that I can use, you know, and, um, and found out that it was. And so in the course of that 11 years, I began to rely on this new inner guidance that I was receiving, you know, Um, and it, it did, it affected me, it changed me more than I had even realized I, and so, but it, it really highlighted the need for, for living with this experience and accepting every part of it, you know, all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that, that started me on a new path. I called it my uh, quiet ministry because I still wasn't real comfortable with sharing my experience, but I could live by what I'd learned by the experience. And so it kind of became my quiet ministry and, and that's, and, and it really, and that catapulted me into a whole nother, um, because after that second experience, um, the, commun- the, the way I received communication changed. I started to hear spirit. So my soul family started communicating to me to the point where I could, I could hear them. They would give me visualizations and they would give me, um, you know, they would speak to me. Mm-hmm. So that really altered and and there's another adjustment period another integration period with that you know because you think oh my gosh i really i've lost it now i'm you know i'm waiting for the guy with the white coat to put you know take me away (laughs) but um you know (laughs) i'm hearing voices you don't say that in public right yeah yeah no i get it (laughs) i get it david there's so much more there's so much more. Can you briefly tell us about your experience with cancer? Um, and that this this near-death like experience that you had when you returned to the light, you were given information that actually kind of carried you through that process. Can you talk about that? Yeah, bit? in the uh in the original experience uh, when i talked about um looking into the future and previewing um i saw there that i was going to deal with cancer i also saw i was going to live beyond it mm-hmm. but i had no reference to when right if you know when that would happen i had no i, I because in this physical life, we live a linear type of, of life. You know, we, we have a timeline that we follow, you know, and on the other side, everything is present at all at once and, and it, time doesn't exist. So it's very hard to correlate, you know, when you experience something on the other side, how it's going to translate in life. So that can be a little bit of a, but I had been, um, I'd been having issues where um, I was feeling numbness in my arm and and stuff like that. And I I thought I attributed it to, um, because I changed roles, I became a manager in a dialysis program and stuff like that. And and I was doing a lot more keyboarding. So I just thought it was carpal tunnel or something that I was experiencing, you know, self-diagnosing myself, (laughs) dumb thing to do. But anyway, um, rather than having it checked out, Um, but all of a sudden one day in my office, um, on my, it felt like my back exploded Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I I felt like I was looking through a red haze of pain. That's all I can, that's the best way I can describe it. And I was supposed to have a a meeting with the director and I, I went to her office and said, "I, I can't make the meeting. I'm going up to the emergency room. I'm in a lot of pain. And so I, I went up to the emergency room, presented myself, and when um, when I you know told them the the problems that I was having with numbness in my arms and this and they 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 immediately thought I was having a heart attack, and so you know they put a twelve lead EKG on me and stuff like that and a lot of details. But anyway, they ruled out a heart attack and they sent me for X rays, a serious set of X rays and um, very painful. 
And then they put me in a room. And while I was in the room, um, the nurse came in and she was in tears. And I knew this nurse because she was my secretary while she was going to nursing school. Mm. And so, and, and the minute she came in, there was this, oh, I remember this from the near-death experience. I remember this from the life review. I know exactly what, you know, she's going to say. I know exactly there's a, you know, she's going to tell me that there's a resident coming to speak to me. And and she kind of steps aside. And a few minutes later, the door opens. In comes the resident. And he's sitting, standing there and he's hemming and hawing, you know, kind of like, well, Dave, you know. Um, because you got to remember, I'm a manager in this hospital. People yeah, know me man. from all the different departments. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they, uh, he finally, you know, says, you know, well, we found a mass and it's metastasized out of your spine. Um, it's eaten away a, a great portion of your thoracic, um, two and a half bones are gone and mm -hmm. you're and the tumor can't support the weight of your spine and your spine is collapsing mm -hmm. and and so we need to do more tests and so they hospitalized me and um and and they were uh they were you know they did a, a whole bunch of tests and they found out i had lesions to my hip my brain my kidneys wow. and it was moving through my body very rapidly and they told me i only had anywhere about eight weeks to live and i need to get my affairs in order well if I can say no to God, I figure I can say no to them because I saw that, you know, I was going to have cancer, but I also saw I was going to live beyond it. Yeah. I didn't understand the severity of the diagnosis that I had. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I didn't know it was going to, the prognosis was going to be that bad, but, um, but I knew I was going to have it. I also knew I was going to survive it, even though in medical terms, they like to put five year survivability statics on all diagnosis, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, my mine had a one tenth of one percent survivability, oh, wow. you know, five year survivability. Wow. And um, and so it was very bleak in their terms. So they didn't even want to treat me. They just were they had prescribed morphine and Percocet and they were just going to tell me to put my affairs in order and try to stay as comfortable as possible while I expire. But I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> remember, I like to live on the edge, you know. Yeah. Um, so that. anyway. <laughs> so but so I ended up I ended up going through uh, holistic. I used a combination of my guidance here. I've got this guidance, right? It's yeah. it's here to help me. And it was because of that understanding that I was going to survive it, that I was able to keep a very positive positive outlook because i believe that that's critical for anybody going through any kind of terminal um disease or, or diagnosis that you know our attitude really affects and there's scientific uh studies that have proven this that you know our we a positive attitude helps our immune system it helps boost our immune system and things so I, you know i was very clear that i was going to survive this there was no doubt for me that I was going to survive this. So I took a combination of holistic approaches, but also I treated it with traditional medicine here. I, I worked in the hospital, you know, and so I was able to pick my care team and we were able to, um, you know, pick a, 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 a traditional path as well as I was used my guidance to find, you know, holistic approaches to balance everything out. And so within six months I was cancer free. David, that is incredible. I still uh, had a broken spine. I mean, you know. <laughs> I, you know what? I, um, you've said some. I've heard you say something in a previous interview I listened to that I loved. Um, you said that once you overcame the cancer, your doctor, you had a doctor say that he believed it was going to come back, but you said. That was his truth. That yeah. was not your truth. And I thought yeah. that was so powerful, right? Because we yeah. all create our realities based on our belief system. Yep. And I love how you did not accept 
you yeah they that they wanted to treat it yeah they wanted to treat me further and i said no the cancer's gone we don't need to treat it any further and and because they were fearful that you know they they see right. these things you know rebound and things like that and so in his reality he thought it was going to come back and that they needed to further treatment you know to and i said no we don't need to do that because you know I don't believe it's going to come back. That's not my reality. That's your reality. So, yeah. I love it. 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 I love that. I love that. That is what I call being in your personal power. You know, uh, because our, it's powerful. Yeah. yeah it is. And our saying. bodies, our bodies are amazing. When we can, when we really connect our body to our divine nature, we, our bodies are incredibly able to tolerate a lot more than, mm -hmm. than what we think. But when we give up, and I had a friend, I, I had a close associate that worked with me in the hospital, and she was diagnosed with cancer the same time I was. And, and, and we actually visit each other in, in the hospital rooms, in our hospital rooms. And the first time I saw her after she was diagnosed, she said, Dave, I just got my death notice. And I was like, oh, no, 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 you can't say that. You can't say that because, because yeah, just like you were just saying, you're going to create your own reality. If you believe that you just got your death notice and that you're going to, you're going to die. They told me I was going to die. I don't believe it. I'm not going to die. I'm going to, you know, I've got a lot of life to live yet. So, so yeah, you know, we have to, we have to, um, we have to realize and but but it's not just us we're not just saying it we have to really feel it and know it you know um and 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 but that's that's that connection to our divine nature you know when we when we work with that we have you know we have a greater understanding of and we can work with our body the thing is is to go gently always move gently with ourselves because um and and to be patient um, a lot of people think that it's, uh, I'm just going to flick a switch and I'm going to be all better. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really work that way because our bodies, um, our bodies are physical, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. our divine nature is, is expansive, but yeah. our body is still physical and it needs the time to evolve. It needs the time to grow and to heal and to do all those things. Mm -hmm. And because we replace cells all the time, our individual cells within our body, but, but it takes time. I forget what the timeline is, but like every five years, um, almost every cell in our body has been replaced. Yeah, um, that. well, but look at that. It's five years. It takes five years. Yeah. So, healing is a process as well it takes time you know we need to need to give it the time that it needs to actually overcome the obstacle and that was another thing my attitude during this whole cancer was it wasn't a fight mm -hmm. this isn't a fight mm -hmm. this is just an obstacle mm -hmm. i had a dear friend who shipped me a set of professional boxing gloves when he found out that i had the the cancer diagnosis yeah. and that i was going to you know that i was going to overcome cancer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so i tried not to use the fight analogy in mm -hmm. in my thought process with dealing with the cancer i just felt that it's an obstacle that i need to overcome and um and and so but i hung those boxing i had those boxing gloves hung up in my office for quite for many years just just as a reminder that right. you know it really it's not a battle we're not going to That's war great. that is so that is so significant david because who wants a fight right, right. nobody yeah, a fight a fight, fight makes us nervous a fight tense and exactly. we get tense and we get you know we get hyped up with a with a fight no we need to be calm peaceful like you know again the opening statement you know that we need to be in that place you know peace love and joy man mm -hmm. So real quick, I, I, before you go, I want you to talk about your book, but I wanted you also, David, tell us how you, whatever you can share with the audience, how you use that light, how you go back to that light to heal yourself, whether physically or emotionally. I think that's significant. Uh, yeah, you know, no. um, a great way to 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 recognize um especially i mean i meditate on a daily basis because that's 
and I commune with my my source, I commune with my soul family. Um, for many people, that's difficult, you know. But one thing that I have found that that really everyone can can uh, connect with is we all have something that inspires us. We all have something that brings us inspiration, yeah. Yeah. whether it's writing, whether it's art, poetry, music, um, numbers, gardening, walking in nature. We all have something that inspires us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That brings us peace, love, and joy, right? Yeah. And so use that. Because when we experience that inspiration, we feel it physically. For me, it feels like my heart's expanding. I know I have friends that are healers as well that, that they feel it in the palms of their hands, some people in their crown or their mm -hmm. or their third eye, you know. So we but when you feel inspiration, you feel it, there's a physical. That's your doorway to your divine nature. Mm -hmm. That's your physical doorway to your divine nature. And so Connect with that. Yeah. Connect with that. You know, use that. Um, use that in moving forward. Because that is how um I had I was fortunate enough to have a mentor, another near-death experiencer, Margaret, who taught me how to return to the light. But she showed me where my threshold was. Mm -hmm. But we can all, you know, be detectives. We can all be uh, you know, live in a state of wonder where we where we find our threshold, you know. Yes. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's significant because a part of the beauty of the near-death experience is the high vibration, right, that you all experience when you have it and the downloads that you come back with. But to have the ability to go to that place without having to die, right? Right. Without having to be injured into like we all have access to that light and that peace and that love within us. So I love uh, that you referenced ways to to go. And it is through inspiration. It is through meditation for those of us that can mm -hmm. do it. Uh, we all can do it, but it's a pra it is a practice. Uh, yeah. Returning to that inspiration. I love it. Yeah, because inspiration, where does it come from? Spirit, right? Exactly, right? right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your book. Tell us about Oh, yeah. Your book. Um, yeah. So I wrote a book that kind of, you know, it, it it talks about the experience. It also talks about how I, you know, all of these things, many of the things that we've just discussed about how, you know, I, I made the transition and, and all of that. It's called Voyage of Purpose, <laughs> a very appropriate name. And um, it's available. It's available, you know, Amazon, all those, you know. I don't know if you can advertise that on your on your podcast. But um, but anyway, you know, there's there, or you could go to my website or if you want to reach me or reach or connect with me on social media and stuff like that, you can go to my website that that has links to everything. And um, that's um Dharma Talks, D H A R M A T A L K S, Dharma Talks.com. And um, that's the portal to everything me. <laughs> I love that. And we definitely will purchase through your website because I have heard that, you know, sometimes authors are not given their full share, you know, through other, you know, places. Um, <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, the royalties on my book are not that great, but um, but you know what? Uh, I I I do have many, many, many copies here. I I have you know, and the book has been reprinted. It's it originally came out in in 2011, so it's been reprinted a couple of times. And and my publisher is is uh, you know continuing to keep this one because many books, you know, they. They, if they go through a traditional publisher, they're only published for so many years until you know until the first uh, first draft is done, and then they they look to see if it's worth you know redoing. But I guess they like my story, and so they keep it on keep it on the bookshelves. Your story is fascinating. Everyone who's listening to this, we have not even tapped the surface of David's wisdom 
and experiences. Like I, there is a lot that you have to offer and I love it. This kind of stuff is, we talked about the juice, this kind of stuff, yeah. so yeah. juicy to me. Um, so I also have a podcast. I do have okay. a podcast. Okay. Contemplative living. It's um, if if you go to YouTube and you search for Dave's Dharma Talks, um, you'll find um, and on that on that YouTube channel, there's a, a a stream that's called Contemplative Living, and every every week I give a short little fifteen minute about some spiritual aspect that helps us to have a contemplative life. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that was that was actually. We've run out of time, but that was actually one of the things that I wanted to talk about, the contemplative living. But everyone definitely stop by that um, by that podcast uh, and by that YouTube channel and just get these, these nuggets of wisdom um, from, you know, from David. So, David, is the is the website the most appropriate place you would like folks to go to if they had questions for you? Yes, yes. Dharma Talks is the is the best way to reach me, and and there are links to the podcast to all my social media streams. There, yeah. Okay. Any lasting words of wisdom? And is there anything else you wanted to talk about before we close this out? You know, uh, the thing that. I like to share with everyone is, is that, you know, love is present for all of us. Mm. I didn't realize when I, before I died that um, how much I was loved and that love is available for us. And we don't need to go searching for it, that it resides within each and every one of us. And mm. spirit is patiently waiting for us to connect. Oh, you just like put a shot into my heart when you say that because I know David that was not like like many of us that was not your experience in childhood you did not experience a lot of high vibratory love and um that was one of the things that you mentioned is when you connected with this soul family it was like oh these are these are my people I feel love you know so that's beautiful for you to say that love is present for all of us. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. Um, okay. I am going to, uh, I also wanted to say before I, before I close us out with the closing remarks, and I feel compelled to mention this. That when you, after you had your first MBE, and then when you went back and experienced another light uh, review after 11 years had passed, that though in your mind, David, you had not made that much progress, seeing that life review, you realized you had made tremendous progress. And I wanted to share that with everyone who is listening to this, that to us, we may not feel like we are doing anything significant, right? But we are growing, we are evolving, and we are impacting others like David talked about when we act from a loving intention. It does go out in waves uh, to the collective. So I just wanted to, to say that. Um, so David, I'm going to read your closing remarks and let you know, go, you have been so generous with your time with us. So David, one of the most striking factors about your experience holds the key to one of the most basic needs we all have in this dimension. And that is simply the knowledge that everything is going to be okay. Sometimes we all want to know in our hearts that everything will be okay and that there is nothing to be afraid of. After being diagnosed with stage four lung and bone cancer, you knew in your heart that you would overcome the condition 
that you would live beyond the treatment, that no matter how painful the experience or daunting the diagnosis, that you would thrive to become even stronger than before. And though this knowledge did not shield you from the painful processes you underwent to restore your health, it did serve as an anchor for you to remain grounded in the truth of who you are. That despite the content of your life, despite the circumstances you were faced with, none of it took away the fact that you were and are a divine being of light that you are not your body, but a part of a beautiful kaleidoscope of love, which knows no boundaries and has no limitations. And so after hearing your experience, David, I thought, wow, if only everyone knew that they too carry this spark of light that defied any diagnosis, no matter how grim it sounded, that no matter what experience the outcome produced, that we can all be carried with the gentle knowledge that everything will be okay, that we have already won and will continue to win over and over and over again, lifetime after lifetime, nothing happens beyond our own will and highest good that in challenging circumstances, we are only invited to move through the process and receive the gifts that these experiences offer us. For David, we are courageous souls, each and every one of us. Uh, we are connected to a peace that surpasses our own understanding. And so thank you for sharing your courageous journey and the profound insights you have gained along the way. Every time you share your experience, David, you sprinkle seeds of light along the way that do in fact cause a ripple effect that you have yet to understand its incredible impact. I think in your next life review, David, whenever that will be, will please your soul beyond measure. As this sharing too, this sharing that you do is also connected to that divine purpose that God spoke about during your near-death experience. Thank you so much for being here on this planet with us. Thank you. And thank you for sharing your love with us on the show today. It has been I was very excited to have you on and it has been everything that I thought it would be. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Loretta. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And David, we close with the heart. There you go. I love it. I love <laughs> it. I love it. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone who, who, who hung in here with us and listened to David's amazing journey, please feel free to go to his website and his YouTube and just continue to learn uh, and just interact with him. He is such a beautiful soul. Uh, and thank you all for being here. We love you. Right, David? Yes. We yes. Love, that love goes out to everyone. Yes. All right. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.